The Champions League gives you a perfect opportunity to trade and bet on many high quality football games at the same time. Today I'm going to show you all betting and trading that I did on all seven games on the 14th of September. A lot of the time when I'm betting and trading I'm looking at the stats of the previous games and making decisions based on that. Of when I'm trading the Champions League and trading in play all of that goes out the window. I have to react about what's happening in play and make quick decisions. I don't tend to look at the stats of the two teams. I'm just using my football experience and just watching the games and seeing what's actually happening. If you want to more deeply understand the actual thought processes and the strategies that I'm using when I'm trading in play, and also watch weekly betting and trading previews for the Premier League games, you can check that out on my Patreon. I'll leave a link in the description below. And as a thank you, you can get your name featured in the videos like these cool people. Enough of the self-promotion, let's get on to the trading breakdown. And I should warn you, at times this does get quite hectic because I've got quite a lot of positions open on several games all at once. So when I was first looking at the game, I thought this game between Juventus and Benfica would be quite close. The odds suggested it would be a tight game and I was thinking about doing an unders trade. I wanted to see how the game played out beforehand. However, Juventus went on to score a very early goal. And I still believe that it would be a tight game, so I went straight in and placed a back bet on under 2.5 goals, meaning that two more goals couldn't be scored in the game. I wasn't planning on keeping the position open for the duration of the game, however I wanted to keep it open for a little while as I didn't think more goals were likely to be scored. Whilst that was going on, I was scanning the other games, mostly just on Betfair and on SofaScore, looking for opportunities. And one thing that I picked up on was that Real Madrid's price had drifted quite heavily from previously to kick off to now during the start of the game. I wasn't entirely sure why this had happened. I glanced at the teams and yes, Benzema wasn't playing, but Real Madrid was still playing a strong team and I couldn't really figure out why this big drift had occurred. After checking the stats for the start of the game, I saw that Leipzig had started better, but I thought if Real Madrid do start to go on a good spell, I could back them and get better odds at this higher inflated price that they now are at. I wasn't seeing any other opportunities in the other game so far, but I was looking at the Juventus and Benfica game and was starting to see a bit of attack momentum and some chances which would make me concerned about the position. So I decided to take £10 off the position, reducing my liability should another goal goes in, at the expense of reducing some of my potential profit from the position. The next opportunity I noticed was in the game between Manchester City and Dortmund. I noticed that the game had started off quite slowly, neither team had really got a foothold in the game. I had a look in the half-time markets and thought that the under 0.5 first half goals was good value, so I placed a back bet there and decided that I would cash out of this position if I saw that either team were getting into the game and creating chances. I went back and checked the Real Madrid game and saw that Real Madrid was starting to improve in the game. So I thought this is a perfect opportunity to now back Real Madrid at these inflated odds. Yes, I didn't get the highest price possible, but I still got a much better price than I would have done if I backed earlier in the day. I then went back and checked the Man City game and saw that Man City was starting to create a little bit in the game. And Man City are that good that even a hint that they could start to score, then I'm too worried and want to get out of the position. So that's exactly what I did. I closed the under 0.5 first half goal position and returned approximately 20% return of investment on that trade. Next, I went to look at one of the other games that I had an open position on, the Juventus and Benfica game. Remember, I had an under 2.5 goal back bet and I saw that enough chances were being created in this game. It was looking a bit troubling. That I just wanted to get out of this position altogether. It had ran its course and I was able to cash out for a six pound profit or a 30% return of investment from my starting stake. So I carried on browsing through the games and noticed that in the Chelsea game against Salzburg, yes, Chelsea were dominating in terms of the possession of the ball, but they were struggling really to create great chances. They hadn't had a shot on target throughout the duration of the game. So like the Man City game, I also placed a back bet here on under 0.5 first half goals for this game. And then I was looking back at the games and I'd actually noticed that PSG had conceded out of nowhere and were actually losing their game. PSG's price was still incredibly short though, and I thought I would keep my eye on the price and hope that the price would drift out, then try to back them to win um, once the price got a little bit higher. And I went back to check the, the Chelsea trade and saw that it was moving quite nicely, the price had reached about 2.0, but I was seeing nothing in the game that made me want to get out of the position, so I was happy to let that position continue to run on. And then at this point I was just sat here watching the attack momentums, I got the Real Madrid position open, the Chelsea position open, and then I looked at the Juventus and Benfica game again and saw that Benfica were starting to dominate the ball in terms of possession. Juventus's price was short, it was about 1.4-ish. This was a perfect opportunity to lay Juventus and hope that Benfica could turn their attack momentum 
into a goal or two and they could get a profit from Juventus' price going back out. And that's exactly what I did. I placed a lay bet in here and now uh, it was just a waiting game to see if Benfica could get that equaliser. Not much was going on in the Chelsea game, so I was happy to continue leaving that position open. Real Madrid still weren't winning, so I was happy to keep that open. Next, I had a little look at the Napoli versus Rangers game and saw that both teams were creating some chances. And I thought it was an outside chance that a, a late goal was coming in this first half. So I used a very small stake and backed over 0.5 goals at odds of about three and hoped that a goal would come towards the end of the half. If not, it was a very small stake, so it wasn't that big of a risk. During this, I noticed that PSG had actually equalised, so I'd missed an opportunity to back PSG in this game, but it is what it is, you can't pick up on every opportunity there is, and I know that other opportunities will come either later today or on another day. So I did warn you to get a little bit hectic, I hope that you're keeping up. Currently I had positions open on Real Madrid, in the Chelsea game I had the under under trade, and in the Rangers game I had over 0.5 goals. I was happy with all these positions so far, so I kept them all open and was just tracking the other games, looking for an opportunity. When I was tracking those other games, I noticed that Benfica had actually scored against Juventus to equalise. And remember, we had a lead position on Juventus. So this was great news for me. Whilst I was deciding whether to cash out of this position or not, I noticed that there was a bit of a late flurry going on in the game between Chelsea and Salzburg. I still had the under 0.5 goal trade on, so I thought I should cash out of this position, or at least take the liability off, off the table, just in case there was a lead goal, which made me lose 100% of my stake. A little catch up on my half time results. I was plus £10 from the Chelsea and Salzburg game, minus £2 from the Napoli and Rangers game, and then plus £2 from the Man City and Dortmund game. The Real Madrid position was still open, it was still nil nil, and I had a position open on Juventus, laying Juventus, and I needed to decide whether to cash out or take my liability off or to just leave it altogether. All three options were still open to me. After a little bit of consideration, I decided that I was just going to cash out of this trade. I didn't want to keep this in my mind. I just wanted to move on to other games, take the profit that I had on offer, and that was what I did. That gave me a little bit of a time to get a drink and have a breather before I was right back in to the second half of trading. I was going into this second half with a close eye on the Chelsea game, the Man City game, and the PSG game. All these were short price favourites, which weren't winning the games currently, and if their prices continue to drift, which they would if they wouldn't score, I could then look to back them at pretty good odds. So that's what my plan was at the start of this second half. But to be honest, not too long into the second half, the, one of those games, Chelsea, Chelsea ended up scoring quite early on, so that opportunity was off the table for that game. I noticed that the Man City and Dortmund second half had again started pretty slowly, in all honesty. So I decided that I'd place an under 1.5 goal bet at odds of around 2.0 in this game and hope that that slow momentum would continue. I like the way that the Rangers and Napoli game was panning out. It looked like both teams were creating chances and that goals were possible. So I thought backing over 1.5 goals in this game was a good option. So I queued up a bet at odds of about three in this market and was keeping my eye on that, waiting for that to get taken. I then went back to check on the Man City and Dortmund game. This was a position that I wanted to keep a close eye on because I know that goals could score between these two teams that can score goals. And when I went back, I saw that the price had drifted out higher than where it had initially gone down to. This is very unusual for an unders market. Normally it's only going in one direction. So because it had started to drift back out, it's almost like the market was saying that a goal is very likely to come. Um, I took the market's advice and cashed out of this position. And if you want to see a luckier cash out than this, I don't think you will. I cash out of the under 1.5 goal position and literally five seconds later, a goal ends up going in. So if I didn't cash out, I'd be facing a relatively big loss though. But I got out for a break even trade. And the goal actually went to Dortmund, the outsiders in this game. And instinctively, I then backed Man City to win the game at this elevated price of about 3.4. In hindsight, was this a good price to back Man City? I don't know, but when I'm trading in play, I have very little time to make these decisions and it was what I ended up doing. I thought that was definitely a good chance that Man City would score and if they scored one the momentum and the crowd would be up and there was a good chance they could go on and get that second goal. The Rangers and Napoli game got suspended with a red card and a disallowed goal. That suspension cancelled the unmatched bet I had in the over 1.5 goal market in this game. I had a look and saw that chances were still being created despite the red card so I decided to place another bet into the market on over 1.5 goals. This time it did get matched. I had a look at the market and saw that Benfica scored against Juventus, so that was a missed opportunity there, not leaving that trade open. I could have got a much bigger profit if I let it open than the £4.50-ish that I ended up getting. But there was no time to sit and ponder that, it was on to the next market, the next opportunity. And that ended up coming in the PSG game. I noticed that PSG had started to create a lot of chances and their odds now were drifted out to about 1.8. I thought this was a good opportunity to enter into the market and back them here. So that's what I did and I was hoping that PSG would go on and get that winner. After going back and checking the Rangers and Napoli game, I saw that 
there wasn't really that many chances being created anymore and I was thinking that maybe the red card, maybe Rangers were going to sit back and take a point here. So I decided to cash out of the position that I had open on over 1.5 goals taking just a very small loss there. So to recap where I am at the moment, I still have a position open on Real Madrid, remember that from way back, and I also have a back position on Man City to win and a back position on PSG to win. And of these positions, PSG ended up striking first, scoring not long after I'd entered the market. So I might have missed that opportunity in the first half, but I've definitely got it in this second half here. Despite PSG being very short odds here, I didn't want the possibility of an equaliser, so I decided to just take my liability off the table, not fully cash out, but take the potential loss out, leaving a free bet on PSG to win the game, which I expect them to do, but what's the point risking this money? Because an equaliser, although unlikely, can definitely still happen. Next up, in the position that I'd open for the longest time, Real Madrid ended up scoring in this game. I did a similar position than what I did in the PSG market by taking off my ability and leaving it as a free bet on Real Madrid to win. But yeah, all of this came from back in Real Madrid after they had drifted out. So as I was getting a better price than what I could have done early in the game, I was thinking this doesn't seem right. Why have they gone so high in their odds? And this time it worked out well. They ended up scoring and I could take the free bet position. And not long later, City ended up equalising. And remember I had a back bet on Man City to win after they went 1-0 down. Because the goal had come so late, the price had only gone back to about the position that I entered in, about 3.4. So I was left in an awkward position where I needed to decide in this last 10 to 15 minutes with stoppage time whether I should just cash out and scratch the position or I should leave the position open and hope that Man City go on to get the winning goal. I decided on the latter and leaving the position open because of the momentum the goal would have given them and because of the attack momentum was showing that City was still pushing on to get this winner. And lo and behold, Erling Haaland pots up like he always does and gets the winning goal for Man City. And like the PSG and the Real Madrid games, I decided to take my liability off the table for this game just in case Dortmund go up the other end of the pitch and equalise. Annoyingly, when I look back, I see that in the Napoli and Rangers game, which I had that over 1.5 goal position, which I hedged out for a loss on. It actually ended up finishing 3-0, so if I'd left that position open, I could have got an extra £13 worth of profit. All in all, if I go into my results for the day, I made £57 trade in the Champions League. My overall profit for the day is a little bit higher there because of my weighing at 101, but that's going on. It actually got a win there, as you can see. If you want to know more about all these minus 10p losses and this laying at 101 strategy, which I regularly do and regularly profit from, you can watch this video all about it right here. Once again, I'd like to especially thank my Patreons. If you want to get a lot more content, a lot more trading content, that's where you want to be. Thank you for watching, guys. Good luck in your trading, and see you next time.